All right. Hey, welcome everybody. Thank you so much to coming to our open mic, our pandemic poetry and open mic night tonight. We're gonna get started in just a few minutes. We have a lot of people still joining, so we're gonna give it just a minute or two more. And I wanna make a special note that we are recording this program. So if anyone is concerned and doesn't want their face to be in the video, just make sure that you um, disable your video. You just press the little stop video button at the bottom of your screen. And um, you can mute your audio in the meantime until we get to the point where um, we're gonna have the open mic. Just to let you know, we are recording and we have started recording. So we'll be starting in just a minute. My man LMNO and his hip hop song about Long Beach called 1888. He had that song that, song that went, um, he said, um, make this money outside of town and bring it back down to Long Beach. <laughs> Any type of human can be found when you're moving around Long Beach. <laughs> One of my favorite Long Beach centric songs, 1888. All right. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Angela Scott. And I am the library assistant here at the Billie Jean King Main Library's Miller Special Collections Room. On behalf of our senior librarian of collection services, Jade Wheeler, our special collections librarian, Jeff Whalen, and all the staff here at the Long Beach Public Library, I'd like to welcome you to the first online event of the Miller Room Spoken Word, Spoken Art series, celebrating poetry and the spoken word. Today, we are very pleased to present this very special end of the year pandemic poetry and open mic night program with Mike Songson and friends. This is one of a series of poetry programs that will be presented periodically in the Miller Room throughout the year. In addition to our local history lecture series, our art of nature lecture series, our poetry and fiction writing workshops, musical performance programs, book clubs, short story reading group, art programming, and so much more. Please keep an eye on our LBPL calendar website for upcoming events, and we hope you'll join us again for more of these special programs as they become available. Now, while we have you all here, we'd also like to mention some new online programs coming to the Miller Room in January. On Saturday, January 23rd from 2.30 to 4 p.m., please join us for our next Miller Room Book Club meeting, which will be featuring a variety of short stories from various authors. So if you're limited on time, but wanna start reading more as one of your New Year's resolutions, consider joining our book club and short story reading group. The book club currently meets online via Zoom and is limited to a maximum of 10 to 12 people per meeting. So pre-registration and RSVPs are necessary. For more information or to join the Miller Room Book Club's email list, please visit our LBPL website at lbpl.org and check out our calendar of events. You can also call the main library for more information or message me in the live chat after our program today if you have more questions. I'd also like to mention our next big local history lecture series and book talk program on Saturday, January 30th from 3 to 4 p.m. This program is entitled, When Water Was Everywhere, a novel view of life in early California and will be presented by local author Barbara Crane. You'll see Long Beach in Southern California as it looked 200 years ago, portrayed in Miss Crane's award-winning historical novel entitled When Water Was Everywhere. Through historic maps, photos, short readings, our local landscape will be re-envisioned through the eyes of the people who once lived here. American immigrants, Mexican Californios, Tongva Gabrieleño Indians, and Spanish Padres will all come to life in this richly imagined past. So please keep an eye on our website and calendar to sign up for the Zoom program. It'll be going up on our website next week for advanced signups and stay tuned for other programs that we'll be rolling out in the next few months. Now, getting back to our program for today, it is our pleasure to once again welcome and introduce our featured speaker this afternoon, Mike Songson, AKA Mike the Poet. Mike was born at St. Mary's Hospital right here in Long Beach and is a third generation LA native who has lived his entire life in Los Angeles County. He grew up riding his bike around El Dorado Park and down the San Gabriel River through East Long Beach. Following his graduation from UCLA in 1997, he's published over 500 essays and poems and his poetry celebrates Southern California history and geography. Mike has an interdisciplinary Master of Arts in English and History 
and his prose and poetry has been included in programs at the Mayor's Office, the Los Angeles Public Library's Made in LA series, Grand Park, the Music Center, and the Friends of the Los Angeles River. He's taught at Cal State Los Angeles, Southwest College, and is currently a professor at Woodbury University in the San Fernando Valley. In addition to writing poetry and performing across the Southland, he enjoys sharing his gifts and talents as a poet, scholar, and mentor with hundreds of young writers across Southern California. A number of pieces in his book, Letters to My City, also celebrate Long Beach sites like Cambodia Town, Bixby Knolls, North Long Beach, and Rotor Row. Mr. Songson's essays have been recognized by the Los Angeles Press Club, and he's published widely with KCET, the Academy of American Poets, Poets and Writers magazines, and dozens of other publications. In today's program, Mike will be presenting a lively reading and performance of his own poetry, as well as hosting our end of the year open mic with a few special guests and anyone interested in reflecting and sharing their thoughts on life, 2020 and the pandemic, the new year, or whatever moves you. During today's program, if you'd like to sign up for the public open mic portions of the program, please type your name in the chat and let us know that you'd like to do a reading. Open mic will be first come first served, so please sign up early and we'll announce your names as time permits. If you don't want your video to show during the reading, please just make sure to leave your video disabled at the bottom of your screen. Otherwise, you can turn your video on so the audience can see you while you're reading. At the end of the program, if there's time, we'll also have a Q&A that will be moderated through our chat. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat bar and you'll also see the chat button at the bottom of your screen and you can type and submit your questions there. Mike and his guests will answer questions as time permits. The program will officially end at 5.30 p.m. if you need to leave, but you're welcome to stay and continue asking questions via chat until 5.45. We'll also be sending out an email soon with a link to the archived video recording of this program, so you can also watch it later at your leisure. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, we are recording this program today, so if you don't want your face to be seen in the video during the program, please make sure to disable your video feed by clicking on the stop video button at the bottom of your screen. You'll still be able to see the presentation, but we just won't be able to see you. So if you're having difficulty with your audio or video, please let us know in the chat so we can assist you remotely. So thank you again for joining us today, everyone. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the Miller Room is pleased to present our very special guests, Mike the Poet and Friends. Thank you very much, Angela. Long Beach, <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's really great to see everybody. And I, I wanna tell you a story about a year and a half ago, I was driving down the 710 and I exited Broadway. And as I went east on Broadway, I looked to my right and saw a beautiful brand new building. And I was like, you know, what is that? And I, I, I circled back around and I saw the sign, yeah, coming up, opening the brand new Billie Jean King Library in Long Beach. And Billie Jean King, of course, was the great tennis star who, um, who went to Poly High School. And she also, by the way, went to Cal State LA, interestingly enough. They've named a, spa, uh, a location after her at, Long, at uh, Cal State LA as well. But uh, the, the Billie Jean King New Library is gorgeous. It is a really beautiful library. And... I immediately got in touch with them and I did a reading for my book Letters to My City about a year ago, shortly after the library opened in early January. And so as 2020, nobody foresaw the pandemic, of course, in January. So here we are ending 2020 and what a better way to close out the year at the very beautiful library that I started it at. So uh, I'm gonna do a poem right now, but then I'm gonna try to get up as many poets as possible. We're gonna start off with a few special guests and then we're gonna to try to get up as many folks as possible. So this is really about the community and about sharing space and build the bridge, lay down the bricks, fill in the ridges, stack the sticks, feed the fire, consider the cost, take it up higher, the city is ours. All right, folks, so I'm gonna read a poem right now. Um, this poem is called Parallel Parking on Memory Lane. Born in Long Beach in 1974, sooner than later, my parents divorced. My mom shut the door and went back to work, teaching elementary in North Long Beach. My dad moved out to Orange County. A few years later, over to Arizona. Every few Sundays, he came over. Grease was the word, my sister on roller skates. We lived in Cerritos in a tracked house. My grandparents lived in Long Beach just south, down the 605 freeway west of El Dorado Park. 
We saw them almost every single day. Summer evening suppers in the backyard, we barbecued and then had some s'mores. Saturday bike rides with my grandfather. Sunday morning drives with my father. Friday night TV with my grandma, the Sears catalog for my pajamas. Original rituals that make a family. Homemade vegetable soup in the late afternoon. I was riding shotgun in my mom's blue Malibu. Driving to Seal Beach, south on Seal Beach. Los Cerritos wetlands with willow thickets. Trees versus technology, my childhood sanctuary, my sister running cross country. I pedaled across LA County, buying baseball cards in Hawaiian gardens. Whenever I close my eyes, I'm still riding. Bundled up after El Nino rain, parallel parking on memory lane. I memorized facts looking at maps. Driving down the Lamo brings it all back. Driving down Zalamo brings it all back, folks. You know how these streets are. And before the freeways, the streets were the freeways. Artesia Boulevard was the 91. San Fernando Road was the 5. Sepulveda was the 405. Um, Olympic Boulevard was 10th Street. And Imperial Highway was the 105. So this is how we do it live and direct. It's beautiful to see everybody. And uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I have five special guests um, who are going to do short sets um, of about two pieces each. And then we're going to start bringing up the open mic. So whenever I host these open mics, I do my best to get everybody up. So we're really, we're about community service. We're trying to get everybody up. But um, right off the bat, our very first special guest, when I first did a gig in Long Beach uh, in January at, at the library, I saw one of this woman, I saw her poem hung up like a painting in the library itself. And she uh, organizes a lot of great readings in Long Beach. She's a, an award-winning teacher. She won something called the Emerging Voices Fellowship. And so she's an award-winning poet. And I couldn't think of a better person to start off this reading with than this woman um, because she's doing some really wonderful work. And as I said, I saw her poem that was um, displayed in the library like it was a painting. So without further ado, can we give it up for Miss Nancy Lene Wu? Hi everyone. Oh Mike, it's uh, great to see you and to see everyone here and to see a photograph of the Miller Room. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, okay, woo, going first. Let me just pull up a poem here real quick because that is a thing I should have available to me. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start with a poem that um, I wrote during, you know, this quarantine time. Um, this is right now, it's called Cafe Gazelle. So I know we're in Long Beach. Anybody, uh, anybody know this great uh, Italian restaurant on Second Street called Cafe Gazelle? Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, it's real good. I wrote a poem about it during the time when, um, you know, we're allowed to go out and sit outside in a restaurant, which I did one time. So this is called, um, Cafe Gazelle. Okay. Two white cloth napkins are brought to the table, laid down with care. A pair of paper placemats are set and smoothed. The waiter's eyes black pyramids above his mask, following the arrangement of spoons, knives, and dinner forks, salad forks, we wait and watch. One gray parking meter guards this thin strip of tables outside, bulbous gargoyle eyes staring down the small crowd, empty of coins, listening in on the light chatter and gently clinking plates. This is a celebration. We put our phones away and talk of our accomplishments. He passed his certification exam. I completed a three week festival of cleaning. The chef's silhouette hovers behind large glass windows. Someone is always lingering near the door. Fake candles flicker in cheap plastic lanterns, spaced evenly among hand sanitizer and what could be fake greenery. Flowing vines and succulents pulsing out of wicker baskets. Hearts of artichoke materialize on ceramics. Onion soup, delicate and buttery, disappears. Beet salad dressed in startling pinkness, gone. We sit quietly, looking. I think I see the tiny shadow of a fairy on the makeshift railing. The waiters care for us, 
bring us chicken armagnac and clam linguine. A lion's face flashes in the perfectly crumbled snow of Parmesan. Our water glasses are never half empty. Finally, a tray of rainbow cakes appears before us. We choose. We linger in the foggy mist of not yet cold, then float home full as the moon overhead ripening, remembering how the cake was yellow too and lustrous. So, Nancy, thank yeah. you. Thank Nancy, you. you one, one more? Yeah, let me, um, let me pick one real quick. <laughs> okay, I'll do this one. Um, this is, <laughs> so like maybe some of us, I, um, you know, we're just at home and I have dreams of traveling. So this is called uh, Somewhere in Montana, maybe. Um, one. I have pockets of questions spilling out answers to nothing, like, do dogs in space still kick in their sleep? What's a plot of land at 50,000 feet cost? How many saints will fit in the heaven of tomorrow? Endlessly, I am plagued. The pleasure of thought decays. Imagine how easy it would be to destroy the entire known universe in pursuit of the perfect paperclip. Polar bears are not a high priority for whom? I'll show them. Who am I kidding though? My long hot baths don't give a damn. I sleep with my phone in my hand. Do something. Save the post office. Glossy marbles tumble out my sockets, lost in the red, orange, amber hues of confusion. Everyone you disagree with is right in some way. So I knock logic against faith and keep the winners. How much is an impression worth these days? How about an hourglass shaped like a rat skull trickling coal? Therefore, kneeling on a fault line, I've taken nonsense as my mate for life. It beats trying to decipher the slobber of suits on screen, talking bottom lines. We're going to elope soon and leave the world of presidential equations behind. Some people just aren't cut out for the straight lines of the city. All of us bumping along and beeping at each other, blowing darts and secrets. Where we're going, there won't be sirens or dishwashers. Just bunkers of books and lounge chairs, trickling rivers of translucent water, and a slowness that starts to feel like being wrapped in fresh butter. We might know we're headed for the oven and adorn our lips with rosemary. The place I call home is dried up and burning. I want simplicity. I want to be the rodeo I think I am. Equal parts open spaces to roam and a coin slot bucking machine. Why Montana? A friend of a friend said something about quail and a pillow of stars. My eyeballs are footballs I want to throw like a lasso around the grandeur of ellipses. What kind of adventure is this after all? I was born into a world of language. We have everything we need. My truest lover and I, hocus pocus, blabbling, baloney, gibber and junk, we can make anything up and lose sense of the difference between a scarecrow and a balloon animal. Nothing's at stake. No one is forgetting the Holocaust. We will all live forever. The edges of the cornfield start to wiggle. A body left out here won't be found for days. When circus clowns circle overhead, we play dead and then book it back to the bus station, yanking furiously, staring through glass. Okay, those are both kind of long. So <laughs> thank you for listening. Um, thank you, Mike. I appreciate thank, it. <laughs> thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you very much. And what, real quick, what's the name of that writer's group in Long Beach you have? 
Uh, I have a few over the years. Um, we uh, had the Long Beach Literary Arts Center. I think they're still going. They're a nonprofit. They're moving towards nonprofit right now. And um, I actually run a poetry workshop called Surprise the Line, which I'm building the website I'm about to launch. So, um, yeah, if anyone's interested in poetry workshops, um, maybe I'll, I'll put a link in the, in the put, chat. Put a link in the chat for sure. Yeah. And you know what, folks, we're really all about building community. So, like, I, I definitely want folks to connect in the chat and um, not only check each other's work out or whatever, but, uh, you know, sign up for writing workshops. And the nice thing about Zoom is that anybody anywhere can do it. And um, this this next poet I'm gonna bring up, he's a great man. He's got a lot of charisma. He's an award-winning poet. He always brings uh, great energy. And he and I have been talking about how Zoom has leveled the playing field. And he does a lot of work mentoring young writers and teen writers. And what he likes about Zoom is that both he and I are the kind of people that we've, we've, we've dr driven our students around and gone all over town, but now he doesn't have to run around town and pick up all his students, he just tells them to log on on Zoom and he emails them. So you guys, this is a great dude. He's my man. Can we give it up for Marcus Omari? Unmute, 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 unmute. We're good. We're good on vocals, everybody. Thumbs up, just like my students. Thumbs up. Everybody can hear me, all right? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, um, Mike, for the invitation. And um, gosh, it's just so amazing to see everyone's faces here. Um, a few familiar faces, a um, few new faces, but listen, we can take all the faces we can get right now on this second or third or fourth stay at home order. I don't even know what we're on right now, um, but it's just a blessing to be with you all. So let me just drop into a few pieces and be on, be on my way. We would ask that all those present please remove your hearts before entering this bridal chamber. <laughs> we would ask that all those present please remove your hearts. Slide them off like tormented slippers, silver, ruby, gold, glass, or otherwise. Shed them off like monstrous aboriginal masks exposing eroding parietal art inscribed in winter, equinox, autumn, solstice, or otherwise. Behold them aloft like star-crossed sage, smoldering omen of Icarus, smudging amber-faced ecliptic moons, flamed out benediction of the phoenix ruined, albeit blessed to fall out of favor, out of flight, out of heaven, empyrean, ether, or otherwise, amen. <laughs> Either way, amen. We would ask all those present to please remove their hearts. Snatch them back to the chronicles from whence they came. Bind them by the seat of their souls to the tear-stained precipice. Cast them deep into the folds of the earth to rot amongst the flesh of other stillborn dinner gods. Now somebody turn to your neighbor. Somebody turn to your Zoom neighbor and say, neighbor, please remove your heart and open your minds if you would. Turn back to the book on broken promises. Turn back, I say. Turn back to chapter 13, verse 8. Exhale when you have it. All hail when you have it. Exhale when you have it. All hail when you have it. Shall we begin? Shall we begin with a tale of she, mahogany sirene of rose red hair who carries a Palestinian touch. Genteel sting refreshes my memory like bumblebees and chrysanthemums. She is crouched in heroine position beneath the stone table, bow bent back and strung with the remaining locks of her own hair, the rest of which the rest of which went to temple, the rest of which went overseas, the rest of which is being sold off Slauson right now at Cold War prices to women who are busy doing battle with the images of themselves in the mirror daily. But through the looking glass, she is Yemaya, face pointed with face painted with soil and pomegranate, listening for echoes of her epilogue in the sea, searching for the scent of salvation in the air, fading into visions of her crown in the surf, bleeding out in the shadows of the altar, aching for one last shot, shall we begin? Shall we begin with a tale of he, 
alchemist of earth, sand, and stone, of washed face and of rinsed mouth, who with the touch of his hand healed a splintered mermaid's fin, and lo, she was a butterfly, scaling skies in perfect pitch with a green-eyed sun, who had also come to the palace in the desert, dragging the severed head of the purple unicorn in tow, a sacrifice to reality, a prelude of imagination's feast. We shall pick our teeth clean tonight, excavate golden calf meat from our molars, water the earth with our saliva and whiskey spittle. Please remove your hearts, sharpen your tears, and fashion a spear from the spine of the first dream that turned its back on you. Open your minds if you would. Your unheralded superheroes teeter on a ledge 12 stories up, capes of fear wrung as blindfolds over their eyes, ready to step out on a faith that has eluded them. Please remove your hearts. Open your minds if you would. Turn back to the book on promise, broken promises. Turn back, I say, chapter 13, verse 8. Turn back to the book on lost children. Turn back, I say, chapter 6, verse 11. Turn back to the book on new beginnings. Turn back, I say, chapter 1, verse 1. Chapter 1, verse 1, all hail when you have it, exhale when you have it, exhale when you have it, all hail when you have it, exhale when you have it, all hail when you have it. Shall we begin? Shall we begin? In the beginning, 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 in the beginning was the word. And it came bright and shimmering it flowed forth from your estuary of the mouth at dawn. It came before forgiveness. Before forgiveness, there was acceptance. Before acceptance, there came iron and wood. Before iron and wood, I don't know. It's hard to say. Rain, maybe. Rain and stars and dreams and bang that's the first one Woo! that's me snapping myself since it's so quiet up in here <laughs> um let me shuffle on um again such a blessing to just just to share man and get the energy out that's right i mean doing yeah if you guys can see man i'm rocking the hell out of this chair i'm used to just standing and getting all that energy out so um it feels good to be here. Uh, this is for a friend of mine. It's that scene where the one you let get by drives off into the sunrise, blowing kisses and putting up peace signs. Backwards house your inside walk you as peculiar smile not worth the straightening of purpose hangs. Slant. Fade. Like or as faith in stained glass Shiloh Baptist shepherds, it's that scene too late, full stop. It's that scene three, motionless, emotionless, isolated interest into post meridium Saturday kneeling before broken Bermuda linen harbors treading time in the wake of waters of a ghost ship of grief, wading anchorless in and out of the hour on her soft fugitive scent of her bath and her body, casting out consciousness baited on a faith that squirms, reeling in only, only to reel in infantile dreams of matter lake lullaby meowing camels hitchhiking up PCH. Of water gypsies, wailing Pisces, parables beach just south of Andromeda. Of someone delicate as glass bone by the balmy breath of serenity, sh sh shattering on the scent of sincerity, discovering invulnerability in the chaos of death, in the stillness of being only. Someone, something special only. Something to someone, not only being someone special. Something as art is or not just art is not this we royal tears crowning the lips of wine glasses art not we this oil and ash fish rib and rain scorched earth and exodus bread and vain lime in the coconut pansies and rosemaries for the insane a breath held for needful things and when in need plenty of love to breathe in this portrait of dreams this art is we it's that scene where the one you let get by 
drives off into the sunrise, blowing kisses and putting up peace signs and sing. That's it. Marcus Omari, yeah. Give it up for Marcus, you guys. Yay. He always sparks it, man, always. Thank you, Marcus. Always dynamite, bro. Man, well, folks, we're going to keep the heat on. You know, I know it's been a little bit frosty for Southern California, so we got you here. And uh, this next man I'm going to bring up, every time I turn around, he's publishing another poem. He's, I sometimes wonder if the man sleeps. He writes a lot, and he's always writing some heat. And he, he cracked me up recently about this one with these guys fighting over an Amazon package. So this man can hit you with the sublime, and he can also hit you with some comedy. And he's just a really thoughtful dude. And he's the right way is Kevin Ridge way. Give it up for my man, Kevin Ridge. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Excellent. Okay. This poem I'm going to open with is called The Death of the Copper Tone Girl. The billboard stood above Interstate 5. It featured a pretty cartoon girl with her bikini bottoms pulled down in a mechanical tug of war with a deranged cartoon dog, which showed off the tan line of her pale derriere. She lost one of her legs during a storm that left the dog decapitated and with less of an appetite for bikinis. They both stood there until the bitter end when they disappeared and the sign turned into a large ad that read, Shop at Walmart, which forced me to grieve the loss of the first woman I fell in love with and could not save. All right. Um, I'm write something from my book it's called Kamikaze Summer. Early that last June of school, I received dozens of get well soon letters from classmates in response to a week earlier when I swallowed a bottle of sleeping pills that landed me in an adolescent psychiatric ward flowers and a great big stuffed animals waiting at the front hospital desk. I cannot remember much about that day other than all the revisions my suicide letter went through. And I nearly lost my nerve with Brian Wilson singing on top of a teenage symphony to God that made me dwell too much on small tragedies. And my brother flew out from New York City not knowing what to say while my teachers all felt sorry for me enough to pass me without completing my final exams. And rumors that I was disfigured in my feeble attempt at death were quashed when I marched with a class of over 400 students at our commencement. Still breathing, but just another lonely name they announced that hot afternoon that echoed off the bleachers of their football stadium before it rocketed beyond the clouds to the outer limits of uncertainty. Kevin. Mm, thank you, thank you. you. Put that bungalow behind you, bro. California bungalow. Um, Kevin, thank you, man. I always love your work. And I thank love you. it how you, you write about something and you'll be talking about Atlantic and 10th Street. And I'm like, yo, I was born at Atlantic and 10th Street. So um, yeah. that's you're a poet, Kevin. And thank you, brother. Um, Give it up for no, Kevin. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate yeah, thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, folks, all right. Well, we're going to, I'm trying to, like I said, we're going to keep it moving. Um, this next man up is an award winning poet and professor and just a great dude. And he's taught me a lot. And we take a lot of fun missions together. We go eat some lunch together. We'll take a walk along the Great Wall of Los Angeles. and. <laughs> And he teaches me a lot of things. This is my homeboy, Alan Aquino. <laughs> Let me make sure that everyone, oh, okay. 
so everyone can hear me okay i just want to be sure you're doing great <laughs> i think Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to read one piece, and uh, it, it's uh, it's. I'll just say that it's a very self-explanatory um, <clears throat> kind of commentary editorial about uh, what's going on in the world, and uh, it is thematically appropriate to our you know event here today. So I'm just going to jump right into it. <clears throat> to put it plainly, I survived a severe corona experience spans a dozen plus nights from November 16th onward. The first two nights, I can't smell anything, not even the vapor burn of rubbing alcohol, and there's a tingle in my shoulders, so I know the check is in the mail. Night three onward, I sweat as if I'd run two miles, and yet I'm shivering as if I'm neck deep in ice water. My muscles ache as sudden sporadic cramps hit me like knives in random places, my palms, my ribs, my foot, my... stomach. They're covered with ants. Luckily, I can more or less control my breath and I don't have a migraine, but nonetheless, my head feels like a swollen water balloon and I can't sleep unless I take at least a double dose of Advil. Of course, I'd love to eat, but my stomach assures me that I'm going to puke. Aside from a mini box of raisins, I avoid solid food for days. I force down a vitamins cocktail twice a day, chased by gallons of water. Every time I swallow my insides rattle with anger. Arrow is frigid. My clothes and bed sheets are saturated. I sink into uneven naps like a hibernating laptop. I close my eyes and breathe. I meditate and pray in the darkness. And every night feels like I'm performing the Roman exorcism on myself. Even though my COVID symptoms might be considered mild, they are a formidable demon. There's a moment during the height of my delirium when I call out to my long deceased cognitive of what I am doing. There's a corner of my consciousness that literally articulates, dude, you're talking aloud to dead people, but it's okay, say that shit. At one point, I'm laughing aloud as if the three of us shared a joke. I don't remember everything I said, but I remember uttering something along the lines of, anyway, I'll be home soon, okay? Can't wait to see you. I confess, I had a sense that I could die of a brain edema or just stop breathing. But the thought of dying doesn't scare me so it's just fear of pain and the unknown. In fact, my fever makes me feel more annoyed and angry. I hate how people still don't mask up and just carry on as if the world is not in danger. I pray those arrogant folks get lessons in humility. I hate how warped their priorities are as if the reality of what I and millions of others are literally enduring is just a mild inconvenience that they can sidestep. People are simply not taking this pandemic seriously enough because the only thing that'll piss me off more than coronavirus itself is an avalanche of condescending comments and pointless questions. But no matter, amidst my silence, by Thanksgiving evening, my fever and cough simmer down. I feel some strength returning and I turn a little more hopeful. By Sunday the 29th, I'm happy to hold down a normal meal. I must say that meditation enables me to mend an emotion picture. And that is how I baby step through this ordeal without despairing or losing my marbles. Pain strikes me, but I will let the pain go and not waste a moment resenting it. It arrives and leaves and I simply breathe and keep moving forth one step, one moment at a time. Now, please understand that I do mask up and I am quite sanitary and extremely cautious. And yet I nonetheless caught strength of will. Nothing you can say or think or do will change what happened to me. All I will say is I am lucky to be alive. No human being deserves this disease, which absolutely does not discriminate. And so I will continue to rest and recover. 
I will continue to get up and work because I am not finished with this world. I pray for humanity. I believe we are all being called to be our best. And I do believe global battle, unlike any we've ever known, I believe that the strength we need is all around us. So thank you all for listening. Peace and one love, and please take care of yourselves. And give it up for Alan Aquino. Man. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Love you, bro. I'm so glad you're here, man. Thank you. Hey, Alan did a reading with me, folks, in the middle of that, and he didn't even tell me until afterwards that he had the virus. Alan is a hardcore stoic trooper. He hit me like a week later when he was recovering. He's like, hey, man, I didn't tell you, but that reading you did on the 20th, man. I, Man, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, uh, there, there are a couple of other, uh, uh, some of you here who joined our last reading on uh, November 20th, and I was actually quite sick <laughs> during that reading, but I managed to play it off. Uh, but, you know, anyway, well, th thank you all for your kind attention. <laughs> man, great job, Alan. Thank you, man. And that's Alan Aquino, folks. Give it up for Alan, man. Alan is the dude. Thank you. Man, man, oh, man. Um, well, we're going we're gonna to keep it moving, and our next poet up, he's a true blue Angelino, man. He really knows the city, and he can talk to you about neighborhood history and redlining and restrictive housing covenants and just authentic, authentic Angelino-ish, man. And he's JT, the L.A. storyteller. Jimmy Resnos, he's got a great blog, and this dude is a prolific writer. Give it up for my man, JT, the L.A. storyteller. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. We can hear you. Thanks so much for your poetic words, everyone. And I am honored to participate in this really special end of the year event with you all. And I'm just gonna share one poem that I've been working on. It may or may not be finished, but I, I would love to just get it out to you all and, and just put it down for, for, for this open mic today. Oh, Elizabeth Guayman, it's great to see you too. Talk to you soon. Okay, this is called American. American removal begins with a language. It starts with Indians as uncivilized savages. It expands with black civilization deemed as N-words and three-fifths. It proliferates with providence, but only for Aryan destiny by the millions. And American removal embraces its robes with an Indian Removal Act followed by a war on dirty Mexicans, followed by a Chinese exclusion act, followed by Filipinos as N-words, followed by Japs keep moving. American removal tests its first PSAs with public enemies, hobos, tramps, and vagrants, but ultimately settles for black and brown youth as gangs. It then, settles its, it then sows its modern seeds with a red line. Red line maps delineate our colors, separating undesirables and subversive racial elements from homogenous, single family white homes. Until a war to end all wars, that is. Two atom bombs dropped on Japs, but none on German Nazis or Italian fascists. After the war, it grows to include un-American, black radicals, and communist hippies into its lexicon. Once these begin to ring hollow, American removal reinvigorates itself. Black drugs and gangs, black welfare queens, and Latinx and Asian immigrant invasions. It then sanctifies itself, calling on property owners to revolt, followed by national publication on a generation of new super predators, predators followed by calls to save our state, followed by English only for our children. At the dawn of the 21st century, American removal finds still new lifeblood. Global war on Muslims as terrorists, extremists, and once again, radical. A generation later, it relishes in good people on both sides, shithole countries, stand back and stand by and on. But when you ask American removal about a million bodies burned by drones in the global south since 2001, or when you ask American removal about its uniforms shooting down black men, women, and children, when you ask American removal about the forced sterilization of incarcerated Latina women, 
or when you ask American removal about the gentrification of our neighborhoods, its homeless cleanups, even as police patrol new hotels around the corners. When you ask American removal if it may dignify those it's uprooted with only so much as an acknowledgement, all you get is silence. American removal concludes with a silence. Thank you, everyone. Hey folks, that's Jimmy Resnos, a.k.a. JT the LA Storyteller, a.k.a. Jimbo Times. Uh, great job, JT, JT. Thank you, bro. And my man is always blogging, and he, he writes poems, he writes essays. Uh, check him out, man. He's, he's doing really great work, and he's writing a lot right now about not just East Hollywood, but the intersection of Pico Union, MacArthur Park, historic Filipino town, little Armenia, Thai town, Koreatown. And he's tying it all together and he's going to bring you the history and, and connect the generations. Thank you, JT. And also, man, he makes some really dope hoodies. And I got one for my daughter and she, she's rocking it. Los Cuentos. Um, yeah, man, Los Cuentos. Check it out. Make some cool masks, too. Thank you, JT. All right. Well, folks, we're just going to keep it moving. And you know what? Here's the thing. I, I, I pride myself on getting everybody up. So if everyone can do me a favor, everyone uh, that reads, if you can keep it to just under about three minutes that way, because we have about 13, 14 people here and I want to get everybody up. I want to hear everybody. So um, I love your eight minute poems, people, but if you cannot, don't bring an eight minute poem today. If you got, you got an eight minute joint, rock it next time. Um, today, if you can keep it to about three minutes, that would be fantastic. Just because I want to get everybody up. And, you know, I love everybody. We love everybody equally. So we're trying to get everybody up. So on that note, um, but tell you what, our next poet I'm going to bring up, she's fantastic. Uh, she does a lot of programming and she's a poet and she does some organizing in Orange County at the Museo, a uh, great museum. And I did a poetry program with her and Marcus just last month. And she's awesome. Can we give it up for Natalie Elaine? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> to all the creatives on the line. Hi, Marcus. How are you? <laughs> Um, just, uh, I'll keep it moving quick and fast. Uh, I am a Southern girl. I'm actually here in Texas right now, but I currently reside in Orange County, California. I've been there about two years. So um, I'm also a yoga instructor. So let's get going. And um, although I didn't kind of go with the whole pandemic thing, but I guess overall, uh, you could think of it as a way of evolving through this pandemic. So uh, this is a piece I wrote. Uh, a long time ago, but nonetheless, here it goes. Evolutional woman. She is everything I need to know. The green garden full of flawless red flowers. She is graced with a gorgeous garment, unbreakable, black, bold, beautiful, intuitive, and strong. The matriarch, the stabilizer, the earth's backbone. Unbreakable, black, bold, blessed, and beautiful. She is graced with a gorgeous garment, charming and cheerful and full of boisterous jovility. From the beginning, she excels, determined to survive. In her womb, the seed of millions, through the ages she will provide. She is unfazed by obstacles perpetual in her drive. Kings and queens of all royalty alike are inherently in her bloodline. The green garden full of flawless red flowers, unbreakable, black, bold, blessed, and beautiful. She is graced with a gorgeous garment. Against all odds, she presses on. Not a moment does her love wane. Her aura of invincibility, her spirit of strong will, her disposition of I will succeed regardless of the mountainous hills. She is black, unbreakable, bold, and beautiful. The green garden full of flawless red flowers. She is graced with a gorgeous garment, her strength personified from birth. She is the matriarch, the unbreakable, black, bold, and beautiful, the backbone of the earth. Hey, give it up for Natalie Elaine. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And the Museo um, 
put the link in that's about the Museo Museum because you're doing a lot of really great programming over there. Yes, uh, we have uh, events coming up starting the first of the year uh, every quarter. So I'll definitely be looking for um, creatives to uh, join me if they like. So definitely, I'll put that information in the, uh, in the link below and my information. That way you can just reach out to me directly if you'd like. Thank you so much, Natalie. Give it up. Thank you, Mike. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Hey, folks, we really pride ourselves on three generations on the same page, three, three generations on the same stage, all the ancestors on the same page. This next poet I'm going to bring up right now, he sometimes moonlights as Santa Claus. He's kind of tired because he hit two, bi two billion homes the other night, but he was just on a recent commercial playing Old St. Nick. And he's always hilarious. He, they call him Brotherly Love. And he's got, he's got some history, and he's an old friend of mine. Guys, give it up for the one and only Lee Beck. You're still muted, Lee. Oh, hang on. No, we got you. Uh, you got me now? You're good. OK. It's great to be here. Great to see, hear all of you and to see all of you. This is called The Power of Never. The ache is deep, or is it the frustration? Angst, pushing uselessly for something that cannot be the way you want it to be. It can't happen. Acceptance of that is impossible. The power of never. Nevertheless, make it happen. This is why we have our own little universes. Even if you want it and it can't happen, it still is happening in your head. It's part of you already. You won't let it go. Congratulations. You can envision how good life would be with it. If only things could be the way you see it, a perfect spot, like a perfect phone call, everything and everyone complying. This one's called Never Again Is Now. The disgusting sight of concentration camps in the US Again, a genuine repeat, as if as a country, we haven't learned a thing. We have a hard time, always a struggle, to make progress for human rights and against racism and sexism. We can somehow justify these concentration camps, or at least tolerate them. Otherwise, the streets would be full of protests, like in Chile, where the people hit the streets by the thousands just because the subway fares were raised. In the US, the streets could be full because immigrant children are being taken, separated, and even stolen from their parents, and incarcerated, locked up. Innocent children, often in for-profit concentration camps. Only misuse and abuse can follow because the plan and the perceived need for the plan is wicked and concocted racist, opportunistic, criminal, and fascist. It's wrong for humanity, for our survival. We must learn to live together in peace, motivated by more than greed, personal gain, and dominance. The need to be top dog, dominance, American exceptionalism, the great nation, great again, the race bait again, like a big fish hooked, hooked on the horror, mega wannabe superior. The minute you think you're superior, you drop to mega inferior. These kids are going to grow up one day, remembering how you took them away. Put them in a cage, a cage like animals, a cake, cake, cage. Concentration camps for kids, actual born children. Thank you. And hey, that's Lee Peck, you guys. Give it up for Lee, man. 
Lee Beck, man. Brotherly love. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Lee. Brother. Enjoyed being here. Yeah, man. All right. Well, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep it moving. Um, this next man we're bringing up. I met him out on Hollywood Boulevard. We both uh, gave some city tours, and he can tell you about Venice Boulevard, and he can tell you about the Boardwalk, and he can tell you about Power 106, and he can tell you about what songs Jay Dilla sampled. This is my man Armand Kennard. <laughs> How's everybody feeling? Can you hear me okay? I don't know which mic, whether it's this one or the webcam or what. You're doing great. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for having me. And for those of you that I know, I wish I could hug you right now. For those of you that I do not know, I wish I could stand next to you and smell you right now. That might come off strange, but there we go. <laughs> All right. So I wrote these two today. Here we go. First one. Walk forward into the distance. Leave the fears in your dust. White mountains ahead. Clear spirit blow into me. Stepping forward under the blue, rain makes LA feel brand new. Hearts sing, silent streets, concrete jungle cables overhead. The sight of the awakening continues. Breath of love struggling to exist. The soaring of birds, watchers, scoping and probing, seeking and swooping, sky blue, freedom view, all men. Repetitive steps, one line along the trail of hope standing firm since my grandmother's birth. Elevation, elevation of my vision. I stretch my feeling of joy around the world to all men. All right. This uh, second piece, um, the West Boulevard Bridge, thank you. Uh, the West Boulevard, uh, Boulevard Bridge, I walked over it today and um, this is the view that I got and this is for you guys. Get up, get over. Get up, get over, feel your power ignite, breathe in your birthright, let the strength within you permeate, no matter what around you agitates. Get up, get over, get up, get over, see what most do not see beyond your physical property. Vibrations shift from your thoughts, alleviate all the negatives you caught. Get up, go over, get up, go over, create a new pattern, draw a new image. You're the only barrier that's in front of you. Free thought is the village. Allow your feeling to unmask. Only then will your joys last. Get up, go over. Get up, go over the bridge. Thank you. Get up, get over that bridge. Hey, that West Bridge is a beautiful bridge, man. Yeah, man. Folks, if you're ever heading east on Venice Boulevard, um, and actually, um, it's... It West kind of connects, like basically the Crenshaw District to Mid City, huh? Yeah, goes it goes over um, Venice Boulevard, the bridge actually. So been yeah, there man. since 1933. <laughs> wow, you 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 catch some sunsets out there sometimes, huh? You go stand out there on the sunset or whatever. Absolutely, it's a great view of the West from that bridge. It's uh, it was really beautiful today. You know, the day after it rains, all is well in LA. <laughs> <laughs> For a couple hours, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Armand Kennard, folks, that's he's always always golden. Thank you, Armand. Thank you. Love bro. you guys. Thank you. Bro, thank you, man. Yeah, man. Um, man. All right. Well, gosh, we got we got a lot of heat here. Um, let me see here. You know what? We're gonna bring we're, we're gonna fly in a man right now all the way coming down from Sacramento, and he used to live on LA. And I would rock a poem about Van Ness, and he would talk about he used to. He used to teach in San Pedro, and he lived off Van Ness. This is my man, Peter Real. Oh, man, thank you so much, everybody, for having me. Thank you, Mike. What's up, Mike? What's up, Alan? What's up, Jesse? Everybody else that I, I haven't met, don't know, great to see you. Thanks for having me. I met my wife in Long Beach. My daughter was born at 10th and Atlantic, St. Mary's, so... I have great love for Long Beach. Uh, in this poem here, the she is my grandma and the he is my grandpa. It's called, she was Frank Sinatra, he was Perry Como. She was Frank Sinatra and he was Perry Como. They say that opposites attract their marriage, exhibit A. She yelled, he spoke gravely yet warmly. She sang, he hummed. She groaned, he sighed. 
She exclaimed, he explained. She was demonstrative, he demonstrated. She cried, he felt. She loved loudly, he loudly loved. She was chairman of the board, he was the humble son of humble beginnings. She sold out arenas, he made them demand an encore. She was neon lights, he was the back rooms of barbershops. She was cocktails and glitz, he was card games and beer. She was loyalty, he was loyalty. Perry and Frank, Frank and Perry. Can you imagine that duet in the sky? That was that one. And I've got one called Letter to Jay on the day of her leaving for college. Letter to Jay on the day of her leaving for college. Remember when I told you that you would see her again, not just in doggy heaven, but when you got older? You won't. Remember when I told you that you'd know when you found the one? You might not. Remember when I told you that a friend who used bad language was not a friend at all? You might be. Remember when I told you that anyone who has to drink to have a good time is lying to himself? He might not be. Remember when I told you that good things happen to good people? They don't always. Remember when I told you that beauty is secondary to brains and heart? It is, but it may take you a while to figure it out. Remember when I told you that I married my best friend? Even best friends fight sometimes. Remember when I told you that this would hurt me more than it would hurt you? It did, and it does. And if it didn't, it must have hurt you a whole hell of a lot. Remember when I told you that mommy and I loved each other so much that we couldn't live together anymore? I lied. Remember when I told you that Uncle Sal didn't know any better? That that's just the way he was raised to see people who are different as inferior? That he couldn't help it? He can help it. Remember when I told you that you must have a beautiful soul since the eyes are the windows to the soul? Daddy was right about some things. Remember when I told you that the homeless man was not mean, just that life had been mean to him? If life were a person, it'd be going to hell. Remember when I told you that you make your own luck in life, that God helps those who help themselves? I'm sorry. Remember when I told you that no stranger could ever hurt you with words because daddy would never let anyone hurt you? I wish I would have included family in my productive net. Remember when I told you, but not until much later, that it wasn't your fault, that the milk messed up my keyboard, that daddy had had a lot of stress at work? That's how young women become battered wives. Remember when I told you that I would love you forever and always be your biggest fan? I will, and Lord knows I have been and will continue to be. And I hope that maybe one night when the party has died down, and it's way too late, and I've been asleep through the prime hours of a college student's night, you will remember me, my phone will ring, and just like the first time I heard it, your voice will make me cry, and it'll make me smile. Thank you, and I hope I didn't go too long, Mike. Hey, that's my man, Peter Real. Give it Thanks up for, for having me, you guys. Peter, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Hey, Peter's got a really killer podcast, Chills at Will podcast. And I was on there last month. And uh, Peter's doing a lot of really cool work, different, different things, connecting dots and communities, and uh, does really cool projects with his students and has them writing poems about California. So thank you, Peter. Always good to see you, brother. Peter Real. All right. Um, you know what? Let me see here. Um, well, we're going to bring up a woman uh, who's really thoughtful and always does fantastic work. Can we give it up for Miss Lizbeth Coyman? Hey, you got me by surprise there. I'm glad I'm prepared. I'm going to read something short. If I fall silent today, 
My hair will weave verses in silver strands in the white spaces between the black lines. Ellipses will well my eyes round down the cobbled streets of my face while question marks like ornaments will dangle from my ear lobes attentive to the silences of others. My tongue will edit the past mistakes of my actions. The scar on my face will spell agony in all caps. Bolded letters will grow from the tips of my nails. The freckles on my back will tell impossible stories of the tropical land that reads under my eyelids. The keloid on my navel will zipper the wounds of birth with suture stitches. The sweat under my breast and armpits will draw descriptions of the solitary roads I transit without making a sound, like run-on sentences in the social distances between us. My knees will write prayers with thick chopsticks on the sidewalk punctuate them with each deformed pore of my skin. If I fall silent today, my body will speak for me. That's it, that's the point. Lizbeth Coyman, thank you. Thank you, Lizbeth, thank you. Thank you, thank you for calling me out. <laughs> <laughs> I was just observing. <laughs> Always great to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. Well, we're going to keep it moving. Um, our next poet uh, is a surrealist poet, and, he, and he's also close with my man, Will Alexander, who's one of my favorite poets. We're going to give it up for my man, D.C. Good evening. Good evening. Can you all hear me? Yes. Hear me and see me? Uh, thanks for providing the space, Mike, and thanks to all the poets who have read tonight thus far. I appreciate it. It's a blessing to share this space with y'all. I'm reading a poem from my book called The Longest Breath. It's called Continuum. As the oracle has indicated, our atomic windows are not cut out for looking twice. If you see a crime where you see my joy, you will have no recompense from your past voices or their ages. The pressure on the nuclear family to raise good customers has become explosive. I would have phoned before just showing up, but there were no amulets in your ears when the collection plate was passed around. A new day is a new breath and night becomes a new reason to provoke the bones to prostration. Chimneys awaken crows like mourning in your wounds. This is nowhere to rest the shadow after jousting with the year of the ram. A light is a light is a voice for missing persons. The dogs of war show their teeth at the floor of your dust factory. The ears are bent towards old souls tied around telephone wire. The crowds have gathered to watch Al make these mountains new again. Voices of the dead make you feel alive and holy. A moon in a moon in a room lit and flickering, transmuted in a dream in a dream. The crowbar in the mind or marigolds on the counter. I've never forgotten anything of mountains or madhouses. It is only worlds within worlds within worlds. Still the eyes refuse to speak. Thank you. DC. Hey, that longest breath is a dope book, man. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Knowledge, right? Uh, um, what was that clothing line again? Oh, uh, Almaic. Almaic. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm actually, I'm, I'm rocking it tonight. <laughs> Almaic, um, and you're, you're part of one of the designers, right? You're part of the team with that? Yeah, I was. I was. One of my best friends, Hussein, he, uh, he, he's, he was the main designer, and I was working with him for a few years. Uh, yeah. Man, well, DC, thanks for all you do, bro. Thank, thank you, you so much, Mike. Appreciate yeah, you, man. Thank you. Give it up for DC, folks. Yeah. He had a cool blurb on his book from Will Alexander, who is maybe the premier surrealist poet on the planet, man. Um, so DC is always great. Nice to see you, DC. Um, 
All right, you know what? This next poll we're going to bring up, um, where I teach is a place called Woodbury University. And we host an open mic there called Verse Come, Verse Serve. And this next young man is not only taking a couple classes with me, but he is the host of the poetry event on campus that, I, um, that I've helped uh, start and produce. And he's a fantastic dude. He's always on top of these poems. Can we give it up for my man, Joshua Jones? <laughs> Appreciate you, Mike, man. Appreciate being here. Um, if you guys have somebody that you care about and that you hold down, or you have somebody that cares about you and is holding you down, always love and take care of them you give my heart peace the way you smile makes me feel at ease and you make me believe love is possible and you give my heart peace the way your breath hits the air and forms into word calms my anxiety and I desire to be right there in your heart as you hold me with your eyes. There's no need to wonder where your love lies. And you give my heart peace. You make me feel like more than a man in ways that I'll never understand. And I wish that my hand wasn't so small so I could love you more. And I adore everything about you. And you give my heart Peace. I sit down and feast on your majesty and I'm encapsulated by your radiance and I thank you for your patience and you give my heart peace. You stole my heart like a thief and you eliminated my unbelief and I thank God my ribs are the best part of me and you give my heart peace. I lay my head on your chest and the song of your heartbeat stills my breath. The sound coming from your chest is my favorite song. The way you hold on to me makes me realize that you love me and don't want me to go. You show me that you love me, that you show me that love is more than just a four letter word. It's more than a noun and a noun and deeper than a verb. In fact, it's a three letter word. It's you. All that you are, all that you represent, time you spent pouring into me, all that you are, all that you be, you embody love. And I'm thankful you share it with me. I'm not too proud to see that a woman like you is not found easily. If only you existed in reality and were not something that I created, a mere fallacy, and I could be as happy as I pretend to be. Thank you. Joshua Jones on that poem. Josh Jones. We have an event called Verse Come, Verse Serve that we do every other Tuesday, uh, usually from 12 to 1 at Woodbury University. We do it on um, Ring Central, which is Woodbury's version of Zoom or whatever. But uh, we've had Alan Aquino as a guest. We've had Christopher Siders as a guest. We've had JT, the LA storyteller, as a guest. And if any of you are ever, ever interested in, in being a guest and reading some poems for your, our students, including Josh and others, uh, holler, please let me know because uh, the students really enjoy hearing new people and it's just, it's about exchange. We love to get folks together. So um, yeah, verse come, verse serve. And, and Josh is a co-founder of that. So, all right. Well, you know, we are going to keep it moving. Um, we're going to bring it up for a man who's coming out of Monrovia, California, and he's, he likes to build bridges and he's a thoughtful dude. And he connected me to a great space in Monrovia called Espresso Mi Cultura. This is my man, Jesse Tovar. Give it up for Jesse. Well, so thank you, Mike, for that. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And uh, hello, P, uh, Alan, Marcus, and everyone else here. Hello, Miller, Miller Room. So I'm going to read for you real quick. It is a post-pandemic poem that has been published in um, Harvest International at Cal Poly Pomona. And it's titled, When They Grab a Light Beer. When they grab a light beer, together again, they will sit together. They won't share fries. They will talk, and they won't poke each other's arms. They will laugh, and they'll try their best not to touch their faces. They will eat cashew cheese pizza together again. Before they go their separate ways, they will say later instead of side hugging or bumping fists. Thank you. Jesse, 
Thank you, Jesse. Um, do we still have Supriti, um, Supriti pa Patra? I'm here. Hey, Supriti, how you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, Happy to have you here. Please share something. Okay, um, I'm a 15 year old, uh, a freshman in Lupita's High School, Santa Clara County. Uh, my poem is the proposed pandemic. It's named Learn. Let me start. We lived through so much. We lost so many. We got so many survivors. We fought so many wars. We fought for rights. We questioned our morals. We doubted our choices. After so much, we still doubt ourselves. Is it our capability? Is it our personality? Is it our opinions? Or is it us? Why do I let them choose me? Why am I still with them? Do I need their support or do they need mine? If none of those matter, how did I let them define me? How did I let them label me? I reflected on my actions. I questioned my decisions. I integrated with my past. How did I miss this? Why did I believe grass on the other side is greener? Did they fool me so much that I lost my path? Or after so much consideration, I finally found my path. People gave me op options. Memories showed me reality. Love gave me strength. Time let me think. People leave footprints, not make my future. If they have made up my present, it's about time to retract my path. Thank you. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you know what, reading a piece already at 15, that's a fantastic sign. I think I was 22, 23 before I hit my first real open mic. So um, keep your foot on the gas, keep it moving, keep it moving for real, fantastic. Um, okay, you know what, we're gonna bring up, um, gentlemen, I'm at a Cal State LA. This is my man, Doug Ramon. Thanks, Mike. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. Thank you for making some room for me tonight. I'm going to read a pandemic piece I wrote back in the beginning of May. Uh, I call it the new new normal, and uh, it should come with a parental advisory. There is some profanity here. One catastrophic worry after another, a relentless stream of anxiety that spikes and drops as news reports narrate some new problem to add to our new, new normal of the week. It started with the pandemic, then toilet paper shortages, no hand sanitizer or wipes, food supply disruptions, meat shortages, the threat of worldwide hunger and starvation, economic collapse, fucking murder hornets, thousands of people protesting for black justice, white militias on the streets, propaganda spreading faster than the virus, Millions who believe this is all an overblown hoax, governments coaxed up to expand their powers of surveillance and oppression. The latter half being true. Worldwide isolation, depression, anxiety, despair. And it's only been two months. Two months? What the fuck? I write this as I sit on the toilet because like feces expelling the body, I need to get this shit out of my mind. The news and social media flood me with toxins. I need to filter out from useful information to keep up to date with what we face. It all does more harm than good in higher doses, regardless of filter. You can't consume too much of this because you wind up with cerebral indigestion. You wind up journaling on the toilet because you can't think of anything else. You, wipe, you wind up having to wipe your tears, among other things. And you have to remind yourself daily, hourly, minute by minute to protect yourself, not just from an airborne virus, but from the contagion of anxiety, panic, propaganda, and spin. They're manufacturing our feelings and our thoughts, and we have to nourish and protect ourselves from that too. Thank you, everybody. Jesse, thank you so much, Jesse. Folks, Jesse's doing a bunch of stuff at the Espresso Mi Cultura, hosting different events. And so, oh, this, uh, sorry for interrupting, Mike. This is Doug, Doug Ramon. Oh, Doug, Doug, Doug. You know what? I knew that. My bad, dude. You know what? I'm I'm doing too many things right now. Um, hey, give it it's up. It's all good, man. It's a busy night. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Doug Ramon. And um, man, we got two more people, but I'm gonna try to get up one or two more people after that. Um. We're going to bring up a man who's a teacher from Long Beach, Bill Younglove. Can you hear me? Yes. You're coming in. Okay. 
Let me just change my view. Thank you. It was the night before lockdown, when all through the state, not a human was stirring, not even at the gate. The masks were all hung neatly in a row, in hopes that by daybreak they'd be ready to go. The restauranteurs were serving up their final call, while customers were traversing throughout the mall. And families in their outfits, and I in my sweats, had picked out our presents that would be sure bets. When, on the escalator below, there occurred a loud noise, we sprang from our seats and saw all the boys who were being chased so far from behind that it nearly blew our collective mind. It seems that their faces were exposed to the world and officers in full force after them hurled. And then the lads split up to avoid any tickets, though dozens of cops resembled a thicket. We were all fearful of said tumult below that pursuit of said lads might come to blow after blow. But into their midst there hailed a red suit. Drone powered, he did most rapidly scoot. On Toyota, on Honda, he shouted loudly. On Ford, on Chevy, he repeated in glee. On Plymouth, on Subaru, his voice again echoed. On Dodge, on Jeep, as forward he strode. To the freeway they went, the lads did that away bent. While Santa yelled, line up to one and all, let us flee from this unsafe mall. The cops stood still, super amazed that their pursuit had become so totally crazed. Their sirens soon became such a roar, even as each vehicle closed every door. Speed signs were ignored in the pursuit as the bearded one tossed out his sleigh's loot. Crashes were heard as patrol cars piled high and Santa was heard to give a big sigh. His drone-powered sleigh did suddenly lift all kitty-driven cars. Each was a gift. Into the air they flew like a flash as the pursuers gave up their last dash. The children that night grinned ear to ear, exposing their smiles without any fear, because Santa knew, as did they, that lives must be lived every day. That Xmas Eve, Santa unlocked lockdown not to mention lock up, and turned all that no into a positive yup. A present t'was to all humankind, freedom from fear t'was a remind, rights sacrificed are rarely regained, and thus humanity itself still remain. So this holiday season, may you have a reason to be safe however you see fit to be with your loved ones even a bit. Bill Young Love, give it up for Bill. Thank you, Bill. Our next poet I'm bringing up, he just ran a venue for 20 years. And he has mentored literally hundreds of poets, uh, former high school teacher, a uh, man who's worn a lot of hats. Uh, he was on HBO Deaf Poetry Jam back in the day, and He's been a coach, and he's just a man that got a lot of love and a fantastic dude with one of the freshest steps. Can we give it up for my man, Corey Kofer, a.k.a. Best Kept? Hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much, Mike, for having me out here, for having something like this, being a part of this, Long Beach Library. A lot of dope poets and storytellers. I really needed this, especially for the end of the 2020 year. Good poems, good stories. Good company. Uh, when the masks come off and the smiles come back and the kids start playing and their smiles come back and they're running again, footballing again, playgrounding again, clowning with friends, let the sun shine in. I told my seeds, go in. Camp Kofa again, we go for the win. Like penny loafers, when it's over, we put dimes up in them. Throwing dimes in the bubble, sun shining again. Ice cube, triple double, Lakers winning again. Miami Heat got beat, they supersonics back then. Superpowers on the hour, Chadwick Bozeman in them. Took off his mask for the ass, he was stronger than them. He'll be a blast from our past, he'll live longer in then. There'll be a slew of Black Panthers up in Oakland again. I'm hoping again. 
a hope for my friends. I'm hopeful for the hopeless with hopelessly thin. Pockets full of masks, now they're breathing again. Rainbow at the end, we finally seeing again. I hope you wish I would win because I wish you would win. Don't want to see another sold out store of tissue again. <laughs> Too many issues within, I watch my fiscals up in. It's like poverty and homelessness done tripled again. Furloughs and no go. I'm one layoff from them. Congress passed 600, what's the payoff for them? When their masks come off, we'll see them grinning again. Millionaire men and women hella winning again. I'm a constituent with advice for them. If we ain't right, then it shouldn't be right for them. While we watch them swim, we up here drowning again. When the masks come off, you'll see us frowning again. Thank you. Corey Kofer, AKA Best Kept. Give it up for Best Kept. Thank you. Folks, Corey Kofer started a Mike and Dim Lights in September, October of 2000. And I went on the first night and uh, I originally met Corey at the Fly Poet Showcase before it was all, before it was a showcase, when Fly yeah. Poet was an open mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> In uh, Santa Monica, man. Remember Third Street Promenade? Yeah, Third Street Promenade. Uh, 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 33 and a third and all that. You know, so. <laughs> Corey Kofer, folks. Um, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Corey. Always fantastic. Happy New Year, King. Really good to see you, bro. Yeah, man. Um, folks, we're, um, the last official poet we have, um, he just survived COVID-19, similar to Alan Aquino, and his story is similar, uh, uh, with well, his own version, but he went through it himself. And he was the first student of mine to ever publish, his, publish a book. And he's published another one, too. And this man's got a heart bigger than Alaska and also Texas. And he knows more about underground hip-hop than probably anybody on the planet. This is my man, Christopher James Justice Siders. Yo, yo, yo. What up, what up? Can y'all hear me? Y'all can hear me good? Yeah? All right. For sure. Um, uh, yeah, I'll explain the whole COVID thing after after the piece. Uh, so this piece is called Unapologetic. I hope y'all dig it. And yeah. <clears throat> God fed us breadcrumbs to live off a of minimal. Rinsing off a of black skin to be a white too. Corinthians missing from 66 versions. Mary Poppins still claims to be a fucking virgin. Mobile steering with Nova drunk. All powers and red rum. Eve remains unsung in the fucking patriarch. While homophobia rise from the freaking graveyard. I be tired, y'all. I be tired, y'all. Seeing the same demons behind different faces. Anger issues with happiness while I chase it. Down these dark tunnels echoing that crash talk. 21 floating savages hold red balloons, fear exhaust. How much it costs? How much it costs? Here's some tokens for some wise thoughts. Eating away your innocence. Dancing kings sing some horrors, making it hard to be vulnerable in this minstrel. White folks don't get Ivan Illich playing victim with good intentions. Admittedly done that amongst my male privilege. Attempting to risk the tears off the blood of my sacrifices. Riper than the fiction, strange drip fruition at the root of U.S. as children. Hands very raised in drunken fate. Staggering ditty bops across Johnny's plank. Double D's in a fight club holding threes. Jaw breaking bad greed and lust for 25 cents. An extra quarter gets you many men dying of paranoia. Ripping off the wings of Macklemore vultures. Black boy fly no matter how controversial. Every time I've been in love, I ain't never been sober. Too afraid to be in love. Too afraid to burn these bridges and use the ashes for comfort. But I'm never too afraid to bring the motherfucking ruckus when my name is spoken. Too afraid to change too much of the same as a groundhog inferior to mountaintops I died off. Caution as an imposter descending Rome and feminist ideology. The toxicity of my intimacy reeks of BET uncut and holding caulfields, tip drills, fetishizing conversations of the mud. 
hold to be escorted to a different place amongst the touch because time and time again, this world has not shown where I belong aside from entertainment, where I pimp my soul for the relation to yours. See, I'd rather live in sin if it meant to be authentic. Lies led to lynches to smoke emits from false whistles that blow to avalanche tornadoes amongst the Jumanji fable, never rated by a Karen. Squeamish towards bloodshed when it's not there, it's leaking on the concrete, dripping from batons, covered by rubber bullets. This the Gil Scott apocalypse of unrest poets. Now nah, we can't get along. If America gotta die to, for us to be free, then shit, so long. Welcome to the Terror Dome. Christopher James Justice Siders. Oh, uh, yeah, wear a mask, wear a mask, uh, please. Uh, I almost didn't survive COVID. Uh, my respiratory system failed and I had pneumonia and I was in the hospital for a week. So it's real. Please wear a mask and take care of yourselves. Love, peace. Love you, Chris. Folks, I was sending text messages to Chris like, just sending you energy, Chris. Sending, you know, and um, fortunately, Chris is right here and he's doing just fine now. But man, uh, two two months ago, right, Chris? Like less than two months ago. Yeah, uh, the week before my birthday in September. Uh, to I I got exposed on the on the fifth, tested positive on the ninth, and went to the hospital on the eighteenth and came out the twenty fifth. Man, yeah. man, oh man. Man, well, here's, here's to Christopher Siders, man. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, we're just about at the end here, but um, a couple of things I wanted to say. Um, when the pandemic ends, I'm going to be doing quarterly events at, and actually we're even going to keep doing them over Zoom too, but um, at the Long Beach Downtown Public Library, the Billie Jean King Library is a super beautiful space. In the Miller Room, the, the room and the space that is, is sponsoring today's event it's just a beautiful, beautiful room. And I, I, did a, I did a reading there way back in January, but I'm going to be doing quarterly events uh, with them. And I want to encourage you all to check out that library. Um, but also here in the chat, I'm going to do one final poem is to kind of wrap this up right here. But um, here in the chat, I want to just say, um, please uh, build bridges and connect with folks and get, get email addresses or get web links, um, add each other on IG and, and you know, Twitter and, and everything else, you know, and, uh, as Nancy just said, poets are our tribe, you know, our tribe, um, the church of poetry, right? You know, this is the, this is it right here, folks, you know? Um, so I, I was born in Long Beach, so I have a, I have a close connection to Long Beach, so I always like to talk about that, but I'm gonna just do a quick little final poem and, and, uh, and that's it. The 562. The 562 is a nexus, a suburban urban cross section, a small town, big city, affluent yet gritty. The 562 is somewhere between Hollywood and Irvine, Santa Monica and Anaheim. The 562 is a good time because its people are down to earth. Blessed by birth to be born where the vibes are warm. Catch that cool ocean breeze blown in from the beach. And the clouds, they come from the south. As the coast winds around the peninsula of Palos Verdes, the temperature is perfect. This land was once marshlands and willow thickets intercepted by the LA River, but now surfers and grandparents kick it. The 562 is all American multicultural, folks from Iowa to Cambodia, El Salvador to Ethiopia, aviation Okies in the aerospace industry, and denizens of Long Beach Groove to Snoop Dogg and Sublime, garage rockers and freestyle rhyme, and on the streets of Long Beach you can find oil and Signal Hill, Broadway's alternative lifestyles, art in the East Village, downtown lofts and rockabilly chillers, and how many poly players are in the NFL? From Joe Joe's to the Prospector, Cohiba to the Blue Cafe, drinking sangria on a hot day, the bar flies cruise from the 49er to Belmont Shore, ferns to the V Room. And private parties used to get loose at the Spruce Goose. The 562 is a window into the future with lots of history. Like the powerful earthquake of 33, the Pike used to be the place to be. And can we salute Cameron Diaz and her flavorful family? Respect to Lakewood, Cerritos, Bellflower, Norwalk, Cudahy, Southgate, Compton, to damn near Bell Gardens. Not to be confused with 310, this is the 562, in the middle of SoCal, but its own little world. It's another beautiful day in El Dorado Park, in the place of my birth and in the home of my heart. This is the 562. Woo! 
Thank you, people. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, and you know what? I'm going to turn it back over to Angela, our, our librarian in the Miller Room. And um, Angela, take it away. Well, I just want to thank you, everybody, so much. Thank you to Mike and to all of our special guests who have participated in our program tonight. You guys have amazing vision, voice, emotion, passion. It's powerful. It really moved me, and I'm sure everybody can say the same thing here. It's just been so inspiring. And I want to thank you all again for joining us and all of our patrons in the community who have been listening in and just sucking all of this up today. Um, I want to also thank our library administration and staff, friends of the library, the LBPL Foundation, and all of our contacts in the poet poetry community and elsewhere who have helped to get this uh, out to everyone today. And I hope that you'll um, join us again in the future. We have more upcoming programs. Um, have a very safe, healthy, happy new year. We're gonna stick around for another 10 minutes or so until about 5.45 and then we're gonna have a hard stop of the program. But um, if you wanna you know, unmute yourselves and chat or ask any questions, um, Mike will take some Q&A. Uh, if anybody has anything they wanna say, feel free to do it now. Um, but again, thank you so much for joining us and uh, take it away, Mike. Thanks everybody. Thank you, everybody. And um, you know, you like I said, connect connect with some folks, and um, we really appreciate you all. And uh, thanks, to everybody. And um, fantastic job, everyone. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Did anybody have any questions, or if you have any information you want to share in the chat, go right ahead. Um, I also have some information here. I'm going to put up on the screen for um, some of our guest poets earlier. Um, if you want, you can copy this information down as well. Um, okay, and uh, can everybody see this? I hope so. All right. Um, Mike, we had a few quick questions if you have a chance. Um, uh, some of the websites dedicated to poetry, do you have any that you recommend in particular? You know, definitely the most popular poetry websites are like the poetryfoundation.org and Academy of American Poets, but there's a lot of great poetry websites. And um, anybody here that has a, a favorite poetry website, type it into the chat because it's great to connect dots. And a lo local sites, there's a site called Cultural Weekly that's published four or five of the poets here with us today. I think Alan Aquino and Armand Kennard and Chris Siders, um, I think Nancy ha have, have been published on Cultural Weekly. So um, please, if, if any of you have any favorite poetry websites, type it into the chat. And uh, there is a great online poetry community. Anybody want to add anything to that? Yeah, feel free to unmute yourselves, guys, if you have anything you want to contribute. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm uh, organizing a Poetry and Pearls event series at My Place Cafe in Pasadena, California. And on January 8th, um, we're going to have a... Um, Long Cal State Long Beach uh, MFA graduate uh, Andrew Liu uh, read out of his uh, thesis, AKA poetry collection. So you can, uh, we would like for all of you guys to tune in. It's gonna be available on YouTube. I'll probably put the link to the YouTube channel right here once I uh, get it right now. But that's my only announcement. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Um, is there anybody else who has anything they wanna contribute? Joshua? Um, I had already put it in the chat, but if you guys didn't see it, I'm um, interning at the community with the Community League Literature Initiative at the Sims Poetry of Library, which is on um, Florence and Fifth Avenue here in Inglewood. And we're looking for poetry books written by anybody. Um, we were trying to fill up our shelves for the Black and Latinx poets. Um, I have some of you guys' books, some of the people here that I know have written books, I have um, already have them. But if you have books sitting at home, um, that are poetry books and you would like to donate, please, you can contact me. I'll put my email in, in the description, in the chat below, or you can email the library's email and do that stuff. Or if you just want to donate financially, we're trying to grow. It's a, it's a great organization run by um, Hiram Sims. Um, so please help out, send information. That would be great. Awesome. Thank you all. 
I'm a student at the Community Literature Initiative and I approve this message. <laughs> yeah, yeah awesome. just thank you everyone and, and happy new year. We've got a new year on the horizon. Years are still happening. I know, so much to look forward to. Um, oh, can I make an announcement? Yes. Uh, hey everyone, my name my name is Chris Siders. I uh, just formally introduced uh, um, myself. Um, I just did uh, an hour set poetry last night to raise money for uh, Dorothy's Place. It's a women's shelter in uh, Salinas, California. It's about five and a half, six hours north from here in uh, Monterey County. So if you, I'm just asking if folks could uh, please donate to Dorothy's Place because, uh, you know, times are, you know, really hard with COVID and, and whatnot. We're just trying to, you know, really help out the community. And I just typed out the uh, the website link, uh, dorothysplace.org in the, in the chat. So can you please donate whatever you can? Uh, it will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Mike, we had a quick question, um, and I noticed that we did have some younger writers here today, which I thought was really amazing. Um, uh, Supriti, I think, was probably the youngest who uh, joined us today, and that was just fabulous, so inspiring. Um, what advice do you have for younger writers? Uh, Mike, if you have any thoughts on that, you can share. Well, you can never read too much. You know, that's, the, I guess that's the starting point, is just reading a lot. but. Um, I always talk to um, you know students about not only reading a lot, but you know even just journaling every day, and a lot of times journaling even if you're just journaling about your everyday life, because writing is thinking, and the more you write, the better you'll be. And so, also you know writing gives you some good inner unity. It gives you that helps you uh, get the spiders out of the corners, right? You know. <laughs> yep. All right. Okay. I, I have something to say, and I'm, gonna that, echo, something. and I'm gonna echo Mike's words. Like five years ago, I ran into him in a in, in in one reading. Is keep showing up, go as to many open mics as you can, show your face. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to bomb the poem in front of the stage. Just do it. Just do it. Keep writing and keep showing up. Let people know who you are. Let people hear your words. Your, whole, your words have value. Don't be afraid. Elizabeth, you know what? Um, it's so cool how many different events I've seen you at. And, um, and you really always support folks. I see you um, at people's book parties. And, and uh, I really appreciate how you, how you really build community. I started late, so I have to start. <laughs> I have to be more aggressive. <laughs> but you know, your dedication is, is and uh, you know, remember you told me about your 200 page thesis that you wrote about Sonia Sanchez? Yes. Man, Elizabeth is a serious poetry. poetry <laughs> if you want to get down on some poetry, you want to talk about the history of poetry, uh, she can talk to you about not just social justice, but about um, the history in the last 50, 60, 70 years. Um. Yeah, um, I wrote about I, when I was a young student in Venezuela. Um, I, 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 had an, I was an English major in Venezuela and um, I chose to write about African American women writers and specifically about Sonia Sanchez. So in Venezuela, you to do your B, your 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 bachelor's, you don't do four years; you do five years, and at the end of the five years, you have to produce a book. And this is mine. <laughs> hey, much respect, Lisbeth. <laughs> much respect. All right. Well, it looks like we are just right at 545 and we've pretty much wrapped up our questions for now. Um, thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Have a very safe, healthy, and happy new year. We look forward to seeing you again soon. More upcoming programs with the Miller Room and with the Long Beach Public Library. So thanks again, everyone, and good night. And thank you again, Mike, and all the work that you put into this for us, too.
Um, folks, stay in touch. And if anybody needs to email me, mikepoetla at gmail.com. But I mean, let's reach out and, and connect dots. And thank you, Angela, thank you. And I'm looking forward to more events at the Miller Room. Yeah, we're going to have another poetry um, open mic special program in um, April. Yeah. As well. Thanks. So we'll keep everybody informed. Happy New Year, everybody. And thank you. To be continued. Thank, thank you. you so much, everyone. Thank you. Happy New Year. All right. Thank Happy you. New Year. Thank you, Mike. Happy New Year to all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, thank you, Amon. <laughs> all right. To thank be you. All, all right. right. That was awesome. Much love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks again. All right. Thank you.